whole project by Oliver Cade, Martha Caden, and Hayden. Executive summary. The design of our catapult was modified significantly to achieve what we built. We originally wanted to make a free weight design to maximize the force due to gravity for the capacity of throwing arm, as well as using some of the surgical tubes for elastic force on the throwing arm. But we quickly realized how that design would not quite work. So we decided to build our catapult by using the elastic force alone. We noticed how the free weight design would not work well enough with our catapult primarily because of the size constraints and due to the issue not there not being enough force to throw the beanbag 25 feet. With the new design, the elastic bands pull the throwing arm down to throw the beanbag. A problem arose when we first tested this. The catapult would come off the ground every time we threw the beanbag, wasting some of the energy to throw the beanbag. So we decided to fill the base of the catapult with concrete to keep it from moving off the ground. For the project management aspect of this, of this project, we had four major teamwork strategies that we used. Number one was creating a group chat so we could communicate better. Number two, we aimed to keep team discussions on task and targeted for productive work time. And third, we were informing everyone on the project progress so everyone could know what phase the project is in and what's been completed. The four major milestones we really, we really used to, uh, to use as a timeline for our project were the initial brainstorm, the conceptual design, the prototype, and the final build. All of these were due about two weeks apart in sequential order, and as you can see in the chart below, they were all due before the end of the project. Next, the design, engineering, and cost analysis aspects of our project. Project definition. Our team has been tasked with the problem of moving a beanbag from point A to point B, which is 25 feet away, using only a catapult. We were asked to get it as far as possible and as accurately as possible. We can be successful reaching 25 feet, shooting the the catapult accurately and hitting the target, staying within the height and weight parameters that were given to us and making sure that the catapult will not fall over or break while launching. During the firing, strain and stress are created. Stress is created in the thread on one side of the throwing arm and at the same time the strain is created on the other side of the throwing arm in the surgical tubing. The strain, uh, the strain and stress together create a moment where the sum of the forces before the firing is zero. When the nail is moved, the stress of the thread disappears and the strain of the surgical tubing makes the beanbag fire. This is also when the potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. What I previously said was later tested. The major components uh, that were tested were the angle of launch and the latching mechanism. By testing various angles between 35 and 60 degrees, the optimal launch angle of 39 degrees was found together with a specific tension. The tension wasn't measured, but the beanbag's velocity was cal calculated, which ended up being 8.19 meters per second. We designed this catapult to execute the expectations that were set to fulfill the objectives. First, we performed some sample calculations to determine the launch angle needed to make the ideal launch from the catapult. Then we settled the design that made most sense to maximize the stability and durability of the catapult itself while it stayed relatively light. We, originally, we decided to create a catapult that had a large base surrounding a smaller base to maximize the stability of the catapult and use a free weight to throw the beanbag but decided that it would not work due to the size and weight constraints, which limited the ability of free weight weighing enough to throw the beanbag, the distance we needed. With these reasons, we changed our design to smaller base with the surgical tube to generate the force we need to throw the beanbag 25 feet. We then assembled the catapult and tested it to ensure that we would meet our requirements. 
For the construction of this catapult, we made it primarily out of wood, so that way um, it, uh, it would be durable, but the wood would also absorb the shock from whenever we launch it with the throwing arm, throw, launch the beanbag. And um, the one exception to that is we have the metal rod going through to connect the uh, vertical upright braces to the um, to the throwing arm. Um, with that said, uh, the base is a 12-inch square, so it's a one-foot square, um, which seems small, but it's actually just the size that we need. Um, whenever we tested it, um, the beanbag was going far enough, um, and it wasn't falling over. The base was tipping a little bit, um, but it wasn't much uh, of a difference. It wouldn't affect us as much because we had enough weight where we could just fill it with concrete. And so the concrete was good enough uh, to uh, hold the base down so it doesn't rock back and forth. And we can launch the beanbag without having to worry about anything happening. Our material mainly came from Home Depot. So lumber, screws, dowel, concrete all came from Home Depot.